Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 127 of Korea Podcast. Our today's guest is Mr. Maxwell Tills. He's a freelance illustrator from Sydney, Australia, based in London currently. Now, with that quick introduction out of the way, could you please give us a little introduction on how we got into the worlds of the visual arts and design and everything? You know, what was it, uh, like, basically the starting point for you? Mate, yeah, sure. Uh, well, uh, thanks for having me on. It's always a pleasure just to kind of chat with someone new. Um, I'm So I work like a freelance illustration and I kind of try and do it mostly based around travel. Uh, so it's something I kind of always like to do. I always like to draw when I was a kid. Uh, but then I moved to England when I was about 22. I left, I left Sydney. And it was because I met a girl for visa-wise. She was French and everything. So it just kind of makes sense that we could like live in the UK, but I kind of need to give my, my family a better excuse as to why I was leaving other than just for a relationship. So I was like, oh, I'm going to try and be an artist because I always like to draw. And so I left uni and then, uh, yeah, I mean, slowly over the years, selling a few drawings, selling a few more, you somehow managed to pay a month's rent and then it kind of snowballed into my full-time job. Now I'm kind of here pinching myself six, seven years later. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I never thought I'd become an artist, never professionally at least. But uh, yeah, just, you know, as as it goes with life, sometimes you just find yourself in these situations and you're very happy with it. And yeah, definitely. Here's the thing that I've recently been noticing because I every time and like every day I'm thinking about this stuff. Mm. You know, when someone wants to get into art and is passionate about art, for example, sees like works of, I don't know, Feng Zhu or some other famous artists and right. yeah. wants to, you know, get into, for example, video game industry and wants to become a concept artist. Nice. And yeah. usually when you see a lot of these people and you see their first works and how they begin, they are mm-hmm. really obsessed with, you know, trying to make everything realistic and they kind of like, you know, break away from this whole notion of like, you know, actually expressing yourself through art. And here's the thing that I noticed, realized, and it, and it also includes you. A lot of people right. who don't like, you know, pay taken that you know kind of like you know mentality and path, and just one, and they just do art because they like it and it just feels right. And without mm-hmm. them knowing it, it attra- it attracts other people. And I think w- without them realizing, you're doing actually what you're expressing yourself properly without yeah. being boring about other factors and stuff. And usually those type yeah. of stuff, even on Twitter, there's a lot of artists, different, like, you know, um, different styles that might not be considered technically great. By the way, I'm not saying, like, the words aren't technically good or anything. No, don't get me wrong. But the, <laughs> my, my point is that the whole common factor here is that, you know, those artists really focus on, like, you know, what, what, kind, what type of art do they enjoy? Exactly. Or well, I mean, anything. if we're going to talk about expression, I mean, expression is so broad and so, and it's all encompassing, you know. So, I mean, my work is very technical, I guess, in that regard. You know, it's a lot of architecture, it's a lot of straight lines. I don't get too conceptual, but it's still my expression. It's still my expression in my own way. And that was always my, like, intention to become an artist. I never wanted to get too, like, crazy expressive. Uh, I, no, that's that's not the word, but too, too overly conceptual or abstract. That's the word I was looking for, too abstract. Um, but yeah, mate, I mean, we all kind of express whatever we're trying to do in, in our own unique way. So I guess every artist is, whether or not they're thinking of, of setting out, right, I want to express these thoughts or ideas, but it just kind of comes through their art. No matter what you do, it's an expression in one form or another. Um, yeah, definitely. Like, and uh, another artist that actually popped in my mind, I don't know if you know him, Jars Art. He does this, you know, perspective <laughs> stuff, style of in room interiors and stuff like that on Instagram. How oh, cool. And, Maybe. You know the, the names that like, you've kind of... Yeah. You know, I know their pictures and, like, their display profiles. It's like with music, you know, if you're, like, you've got a song you want to play and it's on your Spotify and you're like, what was the, what was the name of that song? But you know the image of the album art, it's the same with these Instagram guys. So I'm like, yeah, exactly. I don't know Jar's art. But then you show me something, I'm like, oh, of course, he's my friend. I know him very well. Sorry, I'm, I'm rambling, but yeah. yeah. No worries, no worries. And as I was saying, he's kind of like, you know, similar. I think he's a start and the way he started was kind of similar to yours as well. And um, at the beginning, like you wouldn't think like, you know, 
maybe room interior perspectives or like cozy room interior perspectives could like be popular, but it turned out to be oh, this. Oh, yeah. People love, yeah. people like, people go for crazy stuff. Like, uh, yeah. I didn't think like, I just like little cutout pub drawings and they turned out to be really popular. But there's people that do really like specific things. They only draw like the exteriors of cafes. And that's all they draw, but it's incredibly popular. And that's great. I mean, there's a, like a niche market for everything. Yeah, hey, here's the thing. I and like, I, there was this expression somewhere. I, I don't really remember by who. Like, mm-hmm. who's actually said it, this quote, but the, it, it kind of goes like this If you work on something that you genuinely love, other people might like it too, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Because yeah. you, without you knowing, like you're in the flow, you're putting your passion and taste and your creativity into it, and yeah, I think before, like you know, trying to like you know, becoming in like here's like the sad thing, especially in uh, my my generation when I see it, you know, people want to start art. Like I mean, I I can mm-hmm. understand and feel and empathize with them, but the fir- usually their ambitions and aspirations to become an artist is usually driven by ego it's related to ego, like wanting to the, the idea of being a successful artist is what attracts him not necessarily the there's like, a, there's like a, r- a romantic prestige to it isn't there you yeah. know it's like wow it's really cool like you can say to people oh i'm an artist or or they want to like preserve their their world and their their ideas for, for centuries you look at like the famous artists about time you go oh, i want to be like that i want to have my my face my hand print in a gallery you're right. I suppose, yeah, people do start with the ego. But it's been kind of everything. You kind of have to have a little bit of ego if, you, if you're going to pursue it because it's pretty brutal. As far as a job goes, I mean, there's like very little money in it. and You have to kind of – you have to push through the insecurity somehow. I think I think ego is, is like a – it's just like a healthy amount of ego is, is kind of one of the, the main remedies to the screaming uh, – self-doubt and the void of, of what actually being an artist really is <laughs> yeah definitely and i guess another way i could say it is that if you're like doing doing and practicing and you know maybe for example right now you're practicing environment concept arts right mm-hmm. so you should try you should ask yourself this mm-hmm. if you didn't get a job at a like in a certain studio that you want and it doesn't and you're not going to make a lot of money out of it, would you even still do it in your free time for a hobby? If the answer is no, I don't think you should pursue it, in my opinion. No, of it, course not. Uh, yeah. You know, you know what if, I mean? if, you, if anyone goes into any kind of design or art for the money as opposed to the love of it, they're out of their mind. Like, what are you doing? Like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't start drawing because I, I wanted to sell drawings. I would have gone into selling laptops or literally anything else right art is it's a hard one to sell especially if it's your own your own heart and soul it's your own creation funnily enough that was the hardest part when i started becoming a professional was was actually selling the art not 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 getting the demand people were asking to buy my drawings but i felt like i was cheating them like because it was my hobby like like ah here have it for free you're my friend yeah, I don't want to charge you for, for this. What are you, what are you talking about? But uh, you have to eventually learn. You know, it took me years. I'm underselling. People have been like, oh, Max, how long did you spend on this? I, I spent like 12 hours, say, on a drawing. But I'll just sell it to someone for like 50 quid. It's like, I mean, what? Like, come on. Like, you're going to you make more better use of your time just begging outside of a train station. Uh, but you kind of have to. If, you, if you're going to make this your profession, you have to actually – value your time and value your art so i think to go off what you were saying like if you're if yeah if, if you don't have the passion for it if you're coming in with a fiscal dream you're, you're out of your mind because art is it's it's not something to really capitalize and make money off of it's 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 about expression and it's about a joy it's about a love of your hobby your craft yeah exactly and even if you, I don't know if you paid attention or not, I didn't say, I specifically said, if you're not even going to do it for your hobby. So yeah, maybe you want to... All right, I just completely misheard you. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. Your answers were correct, and it, and yeah. it was your relationship. I'm talking about us. <laughs> Let's just it's with fine, it. it's fine, yeah, yeah. But you know, what I, what I mean by that is like, you know, even if, for example, you didn't go to environment concept art, and you still went to another job. Mm. 
if you if you really liked concept art, you would still do it in your free time because you enjoy it. Yeah, that's yeah. the point. And oh, by yeah. the way, before we move on to the next question, this is a new, brand new tradition of the podcast. We're going to have drinks with each guest, but today we're have we're having beer. So cheers, everyone! Cheers, mate! Yeah, better, audio yeah. listeners, we just awkwardly tapped our glasses and bottles into the webcam, so <laughs> you know you jump. Great. Yeah, I'm drinking the old Brewdog Lost Tesco's finest London London <laughs> lager. Does the job. Yeah, awesome. And yeah, every week I try to like you know tell every guest to bring their own drinks. It doesn't have to be alcohol. They might be coffee or something. But yeah, it's just just a fun new thing I decided to add. You know, just That's make nice. it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, like a little cute. Yeah. Kind of consistency throughout each podcast. It's nice, man. Yeah, yeah very quirky, these kids would yeah. say. Yeah, oh, having a no. drink. <laughs> Taking it easy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we've talked a bit about, like, you know, the, the ambitions of, you know, wanting to start art. And our next question is kind of, like, you know, related to the same subject, which mm-hmm. is in the beginning, like, you know, when you were in high school, I don't know, college, were you originally studying art and design or you were pursuing another career path? Maybe, maybe at the time, you know, going art full time wasn't seen, seemed to be a proper or stable, you know, routes in your life. Now, what was going through your mind at that time? Uh, I mean, I always like just to draw in between lessons and you know in high school you've got your little like school diary or your your notebook and instead of listening to the teacher i just like doodle and, and sketch in class it's just what i used to pass the time and entertain my friends making like stupid dumb comics i didn't have any idea what i wanted to be when i was in high school i mean i think very few people do unless you're really driven um yeah i mean like i didn't know what i wanted i just wanted to have fun and get through school and i, I went to a nice school it was just a normal public you know inner city sydney high school but we were just having fun and not taking anything too seriously never planning for the future never thinking oh this is what we're going to do it was just something i fell into so i actually went to university after i left high school but i only did it for a year and i was studying like international studies and law uh and i enjoyed it but i wasn't like i didn't have my heart and soul in it and you're sitting around people in the class who were like living for this it's like their dreams wow i'm i'm not as passionate as them so why should i be wasting my time and also my money uh studying something that that i'm not going to pursue fully and then i just kind of went back into doing what i like and that was drawing so it just there's always just been something to pass the time in high school i never never dreamed i'd be sitting here Uh, i never thought i would move to england that's for sure but i never thought i would I would pursue this professionally, but some people do. And if you, and if you have that in you, great, because, because times change, right? I mean, like what well, I, I graduated high school in 2011. Um, so throughout high school, you know, phones came about and MySpace and then Facebook, but Instagram, I didn't really, that wasn't a thing until, you know, a couple of years later. So, and, and that the reason why I bring that up is because that's how you kind of share your art and that's how you discover other artists. That's how I've made this my job. It's through social media. So, so, it, you know, pre 2010, social media was still kind of somewhat in its infancy. Uh, certainly on the global scale, you can MSN and most base your friends in your town, but meeting other artists online across the globe you know was, i was never going to be doing that so i never had any idea that this could have been a job no one told me that this was a possibility so you just didn't comprehend you know it's, it's just not a career path you go to uni you become a teacher a doctor or whatever um so i think now if we're talking to younger people or if any younger people are listening to this they probably have a better idea of how to do this than i definitely did at the time because they can see oh yeah shit you can just set up a profile produce your art, whatever it is, music, YouTube. I mean, hell, that's a great, another example, right? YouTube content creators. My old man, he's a he's a, a film director, film and television director. Growing up in the 80s, he got an internship at the ABC, which is this Australian television company, and then slowly work your way up. But now if you want to go into film, you can just make content, bang it on YouTube, gain a following, and before you know it, hopefully you're uh, you're kind of a professional YouTuber. Yeah, it's we're learning, right? Technology is always changing, so so 
I think my school experience is going to be so different to what anyone's school experience is going to be now, simply just because I can't, what are these kids doing with like the phones and the classes? I was at like a museum the other day and it was like a bunch of school kids and they were all like, they were young. They were like eight years old. It was like a primary school, but they all had their iPhones and stuff. I think that's oh, so, so different to my school experience. Like growing up now, I can't imagine. I mean, better or for worse. I don't know. I don't know. These phones. Again, this. Yeah, definitely. And um, speaking of like, you know, college, like I kind of quite didn't catch that. What major you were studying at the time? I was like, it was an international studies course with like a focus on law. So it was, it was at a good university in Sydney, um, right there in the middle of, of the city. Uh, and I, but I only did a year, so I can't be like, ah, look at me, I got a university degree. I didn't. I, I did a year, and it was like international law and like globalization, like international studies. So I wanted to learn Mandarin and like go into like international business or diplomacy or whatever. I just liked, I like all things Chinese. I just found it really interesting. Oh, sorry. And Sydney's got quite a large kind of Asian population, uh, so you know you're always around like these like sort of you know, Chinese influences. And I thought, oh, this is just really interesting. I'd like to move to China and study. and But, you know, it just ne- never came to fruition. Things change. That's life. Yeah, but I, I, yeah, well, I assume it changed for the best, I think. Oh, mate, I got no regrets. No regrets. <laughs> I mean, as I said, like, I'm sitting in the class with these people and like really bright people. And I'm just thinking, I'm not really like these guys. God, like, good for them. I don't know where they are now, but I'm sure they're mega successful and crushing at whatever they're doing. I mean, what about, what about yourself, mate? So you, you grew up in, in Tehran? Where did you grow up? In, in Shiraz, actually, not in oh, Tehran. Oh, Shiraz. Yeah. Nice one. And, uh, and, then, and what did you study? Did you go into tourism? You said you were doing tourism with the guys? Yes, I did a bit of tourism, but it wasn't really a university major. It was like a – like, there, there was these colleges, you know, in Iran that, you know, you can get certificates of, like, you know, working on – you know, and they're governmentally, like, you know, um, recognized, you know, something yeah, like right. that. But actually, nice. in terms of, like, you know, university, I first st- uh, studied, like, a semester of me- mechanical engineering, but oh, then wow. I kind of didn't like it. So then I switched to computer engineering, and I uh, studied that for a year and a half. Then, cool, like, man. it's a bit of a long, complex story, but I basically had to drop out and escape the country. And, oh, really? Yeah. yeah. But, so you ain't, you're, you're, not, you're not going back, are you? No, 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 sir. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah right. And you, you did you go with your whole family? Or was it just uh, yourself? Um, it was me and my brothers, but my parents were there. No, it wasn't like oh, necessarily man. like it wasn't political or anything. You know, it's it's a long story. <laughs> are you are you able? So you are you are your parents able to leave and visit you in Istanbul? Are you yeah. able to see them? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Definitely, they can they can come visit easily. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Nice. So you're not you're not split up from from your your family. No, 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 not oh, at all, God. not at all. Yeah, it's a bit of a complex story. Oh, no, we, didn't, we didn't have to go into that. It's it's yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's fine. No it's fine. But the point I I know the thing is I don't regret like actually dropping out. And even if I still you, you know, still would have lived in Iran, I would have dropped out eventually. Yeah. Um, I've said this kind of subject before on the podcast, but to summarize quickly, summarize it basically. Um, since I was a child, I like I loved robotics. I I loved engineering and stuff like that. Cool. And here's a yeah. weird thing: no one I I knew why I liked it because it's the creativity part of it. Yeah. But yeah. no one really actually saw this pattern. I mean, that said, oh, maybe you should go pursue art. Mm. You know, no. they would they would see a kid. Oh, I want to be an engineer. They would just cheer him on. Yeah, you go. Well, it's every it's every parent's worst nightmare, right? Yeah. Oh God. That's that's a question that comes up a lot. Like, what do your parents think? I mean, I, I'm lucky. I got creative. So my mum's a like a, an audiologist, which is you know, an ear doctor, um, and my dad is is in film. But it's the same thing. It's like, you know, he's kind of creative, uh, but and so they were very supportive. But I know some friends who was not the same situation. It's like you want to be an artist, ah, I'm like what are you doing? Don't do that. It's not. It's not. It's not every parent's dream for their children, but you got to do what you love. I mean, it's a generational thing. For example, I mean, if, for example, let's say five, six years, ten years, who knows, for example, you have your first child, all right? And later on, yeah, when you yeah. grow up, they're going to say, Dad, I want to be a YouTuber or, you know, a TikToker or something. That's the same kind of energy. You know, it's a generational you thing. Imagine? I mean. Oh, 
a TikToker. I was like, <laughs> no, you're going to go to school, kid. You're not going to grow up like your old man. No, I'm, I mean, let them do what they want. But that's the thing. You got, you got to let them, you got to, you got to encourage your kids to, yeah, saying that, I don't have a kid. And when I do, I'll probably be, I'll probably never let them become an artist. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Yeah, I know. It's good. You got, you got to be creative. I, th- I think you got, you, got, you, got to, you got to follow what you want to do. Otherwise, what's the point? You know, we're yeah, all going to die. So just do what you love and don't hurt people, right? If you can just kind of like make your way in this life, happiness is like the measurement of success. I don't know. Wouldn't you agree? Like obviously, you know, yeah, you keep, keep keep alive. And so a bit of money is very much needed. I, you know, I'd like to be able to afford to buy a house one day. That'd be pretty cool. I'd like to have a family. I can't afford it. You know, I, don't, I can't foreseeably afford it in the future either. But uh, I'm happy. So that's a success in and of itself, right? I wish yeah, definitely. You, know, you want your kids to grow up to be happy. Yeah. And, well, in the beginning, I kind of briefly mentioned that you're a freelance illustrator, but freelance mm-hmm. illustrator is a pretty general term. I think you, we can both agree. Now my question yeah. is, what is your main branch of design that you're focusing on? And tell us about your experience from the start of it until now. I mean, for anyone who just takes a quick look at your Instagram page, they realize, oh, a lot of architectural landscapes and illustrations. Yeah. yeah. So where did that passion come from? Uh, travel, mate. It's all travel. So it all came from my, my love of 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 history how travel and history actually let's go from all the history so i um you know i was very lucky you know when i was young i got to go to i went to bali when i was a little kid and vietnam and oh sorry and these these trips you were so informative because i just kind of fell in love with like other cultures and having the ability to move around like i know this you know it's a very lucky privileged thing for 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 a young person to be able to experience but that just put this bug in my head you know i remember my dad saying when he was 20 in the 80s he left school and then he went backpacking it's a very australian thing to do go backpacking around the world for six to 12 months so i was like oh, that's what i want to do that's what i want to do and that's that's where i found my most joy and so that's what i wanted to draw so when i was backpacking i did that i went backpacking for you know six months by myself and I kept this little travel diary and that was like my little my world that was my thing I'd go from city to city country to country and draw it and add it to my little travel book never intending to show anyone or do anything with it I still have it um but that's what got me into to art and to this day my art is still that it's still me trying to draw worlds create little universes that's why I like drawing architecture. I like, you know, the whole travel element of it because uh, it's perfect. Because when I do travel, it's it's all I do. I just go somewhere, sit and draw, uh, and kind of capture what I'm seeing, capture these worlds. It's, it's what interests me the most, and I'm blown away that people like it too. Very lucky there, I guess. But yeah, yeah, it's it's about being on the road. If that answers your question, yeah, it does. I can totally see that, and. Um, actually, here's something that I noticed in your, like, you know, paintings and works that I think really makes them really interesting. Like you have one of the circular design paintings up from Istanbul and you have oh, yeah. Galata Tower, you have a uh, uh, Tower and like, I also feel all of them in one frame, but they are not on the same locations or even the same landscapes, but no. you, but, but wait, your composition was... It, it kind of like it almost is as if a puzzle fit in the right places. Like you kind of manage to capture the whole essence and vibe of the architecture, oh, and the, like the visual Thank language. You. In the same that thing. means a lot. That means and, a lot. Yeah, I mean, uh, no, definitely. I mean, it's true. And it's kind of like I think that's why, like, it is your work's kind of like this style has gotten so popular because it truly like captures the essence of that city. Well, if you, if you can capture the soul of a city, because that's that's kind of what I'm really interested in. Istanbul is maybe my favorite city I've ever been to, and I've always wanted to go. And I remember I called the bus from Edirne, uh, and you know you slowly come into you know Istanbul after like a four or five hour bus journey, and there it is, this ancient metropolis. I love history, so the history of Byzantium and Constantine, and you know obviously then the rise of the Ottomans and and, and everything about it, the whole city just 
breathes this incredible history. So, I mean, trying to get and you know anyone who's been to Istanbul knows there's like the buzz, there's the markets, there's that beautiful river and the birds and the food. It's just like sensory overload. Uh, and so you want to kind of capture that because I've been asked to draw cities for example. Okay. So Rome, for example, I've been asked to draw Rome a bunch of times, but I've never been there. So I'm just going off pop culture, you know, what I think, oh, Colosseum, Vespers, cafes, things like that. Uh, and I you know, draw them, send it off. But then I, I went to Rome uh, about a month ago for the first time. And I was like, wow, oh, this is, it, it, it far exceeded all my expectations of what uh, what the Italian capital was going to be. And and so then since I've redrawn it, and I think these drawings that I've done since being there are a lot better. They, they, they kind of bring in a lot more of what it, what it feels to actually be in Rome. At least I'd like to think so, but I enjoy drawing them more. So I think being able to go to a city, being able to, 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 to walk amongst the streets and meet the people. It's very important for my art at least. So if I had drawn Istanbul before visiting, I don't know, I think maybe you wouldn't have had the same uh, impression of the art. You might've been like, oh yeah, it looks like a kind of you know, reproduction of a tourist picture. Um, but now I've been there and I spent like maybe two, three weeks, which was nothing. I want to go back and spend a whole year. I'll move to Istanbul in a heartbeat. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, mate, I'm, I'm flattered that you, you think that about my drawing. That means a lot. Yeah, I mean, uh, here's the thing, because I always try to notice this little technical stuff in everyone's work, but, but a bit like, I mean, what I said was facts. I didn't try to, like, you know, be nice or anything. Oh, and, sure, uh, yeah. Yeah, and the thing is that I want to ask you this. About your design process, when you go to mm -hmm. a city, you probably your reference for that drawing or illustration was from many pictures that you personally taken, if I assume. Yeah, right? that's it. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It was places that caught my fancy. And obviously, you want to be like, you want to do the iconic things, right? So you got to draw Hajj Sophia. you got to draw places that, you know, if you want to do a drawing that, like, either someone's asked you to draw as a commission or you have the intention of selling prints, because at the end of the day, I do still kind of need to sell these drawings because it's my only source of income. I will, I will starve if I don't sell them. So, so you know, you want to do stuff that people grab and people recognize. Like if you're going to draw Paris, you're going to go to draw the Eiffel Tower. It's that you know idea. But if to you know draw all the other buildings and how the, these these iconic spots relate to each other within the composition of the art, I think that you can only really get a sense of if you visit and if you spend time in a city and you kind of get to know the city. Yeah, exactly. And so if I try to recap your design process, it's basically taking reference photos and then making a layout sketch, then refining the sketch, then add the colors, then polish that's the colors, the, add some details. Is that your style? Yeah. Uh, no, I'm just trying to guess if that's oh, your for me. style. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, kind of. Uh, you have an idea of the color scheme beforehand because you just know like, if you go, oh, I want to do a blue. Like I did a drawing of Paris uh, uh, maybe like three weeks ago uh, and it was all blue. So I went into that being like, I just want to do like a, a use blue colors, blues and purples, lavenders. Um, but if you're going to draw like, you know, a city like Marrakesh or London, you go, okay, there's a kind of image. Like if, you know, you can think of colors. So if you've been to a city like that, you go, if I say the word Berlin, what colors come to your mind? Or if I say Budapest, or Shanghai, kind of what colors, yeah, come into your head. And so you go, all right, I'm going to go off those color schemes. But then you kind of make it up as you go along. So I don't plan a drawing because I think the, for me, the biggest fun of it is just to let it come naturally and, and just, and it's like, it's like I said, it's like building a little world. If you've ever played Sims or a roller coaster tycoon or even civilization age of empires i was a big fan of age of empires it's like building a little world right you start with your little city then you build a farm and, and that's the same thing when i'm doing my drawings of istanbul or anywhere you start with this little mosque or this bridge or this church and then you slowly let the city evolve around you so it's it's the most enjoyable process i feel so free um and I'm kind of just doing it for myself here. I'm just, I'm just loving it. So, yeah, again, the fact that people are willing to, to buy them is the biggest flattery of it all. But, yeah, that's how I do it. That's how I go. So I don't, I don't plan much. Maybe I should, but I don't. 
And do you sometimes maybe take scans of your work and then edit them digitally? Have you ever done that or add oh, some details? That's a good idea, Matt. I wish I could. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a fucking idiot. I don't know anything about like technology. So I I just scan them and then get them reprinted. I know a lot of people have like really good technical skills. So my partner, she's a graphic designer. Uh, and there's, I'm, I wouldn't, I'm not a graphic designer because I'm, I'm an illustrator. So she uses an iPad and she can make an amazing artworks that can be used for, for web design, for kind of large scale corporate advertisement. Like she can, she can get really good jobs. And listen here, kids, if you want to, you know, make the big bucks in art, that's kind of what you need to do. Like go into the kind of graphic design side of it. Um, but I've never used an iPad in my life. I was always a bit of a philistine. I was always like, ah, you know, the, the art should be tactile. It should be real, and it, it should be ink. And 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 I think the real artistry and the real skill is having these ideas, but getting the ink to relate with the with the other inks and the pens and the papers. So it's, you know, it's all it's a real thing you're making. It's living and breathing. Um, whereas on an iPad, you can kind of just undo. I got uh, anyway. I'm going down a different rabbit hole. But no, I, I, so as a result, I don't know how to use Photoshop. I don't know how to edit anything. It would be great because then I could draw something because you know, I make mistakes all the time. We all do. It's, it's, it's pen. It's, it's, it's ink. Once you put something down, it stays. You can't take it off. So sure, there's a couple of times where I've done a big artwork and there's a couple of things that I don't like. There's a little splotch there or that face looks a bit whack or the brickwork is dodgy. And like, I just, if I could Photoshop that out, I'd just change some stuff. But alas, I haven't. And it isn't due to any kind of self-righteous, no, it must be what it is. It's simply due to my, my sheer ignorance of not being able to work Photoshop's. I mean, even like, I assume if you could contact someone who knows a little bit of like, you know, 3D, you can make some like really cool, like even 3D scenes with, you know, out of your hey, sketches. That's a great idea. Hey, there's nope. an artist, there's an artist on Instagram. And again, this is where I know exactly what his picture looks like, but I don't know his name. It's like city something. And he's from, I think he's from Ukraine. Uh, and he does these gorgeous little drawings and then he scans them, architecture drawings. And he scans them and then he like puts all these Photoshop effects onto them, like makes it look like it's a nighttime sky. And then he adds in these bright windows to make it look like there's electricity and lights behind the windows. And it gives it this like fascinating glow. And it's just a really impressive mixture of, of the real drawing versus digital effects added on afterwards. That's awesome. It's really cool. Or he'll like take a photo of his like hand and the pen. So it's just a photo and then edit that photo to add the light. Um, so I admire him. It's not much of an anecdote because I don't remember his name, but if I'll, I'll think of it and maybe we can add it in post. I don't know. He's really cool. I think his name's City of Me, but mm. he does what kind of what you say. Like if you can edit a drawing after scanning it, then you can actually really make some new stuff. Anyway, maybe I'll learn. Maybe that'll be the next, the next style. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Sounds good. And all right. The next question is kind of an interesting one, which is what was the first art job paycheck you've ever got? What was it for Ooh. and how did you feel at the time when you got it? So basically the first paycheck you ever got out of art. Yeah. I can actually tell you, man. It was actually really cool. It was, it was high school, going back to high school. And um, in Australia, high school ends when you're like 18 years old. Um, you do your like high school certificate, which is like you get your mark that lets you get into university. A lot of other countries have the same equivalent. And I never did art. But for the last two years of school, I, I took art classes and um, I did a comic, this big three, massive on big tablets, like this big hand-drawn comic book about um, me being a teenager in the neighborhood where I went to school. I went to school in, in Newtown in Sydney, so it was all about us, like, walking around and being teenagers, skipping class and just, you know, getting up to no good, smoking weed in the cemeteries and stuff. So it was all about, like, being high and all the crazy characters you'd meet in the street. I was like 16, 17. Uh, and it was, really, it, was, it was really fun. I put my heart and soul into it. And it, uh, it did really well. I got full marks uh, for art. And not only that, but I got like top like 5% in the state of New South Wales. And then the, the New South Wales State Gallery, which is the 
biggest, coolest, oldest art gallery in Sydney. They bought the drawing off me because the New South Wales government does like the best of that year's high school art around the state. And I was one of them. It, was, it was, blew my little mind. And they bought it. And I think they paid me like $800, which to a to a 18-year-old was quite a lot of money. It was really exciting. And it's, it's probably like in some big Indiana Jones like warehouse boxed away somewhere. But yeah, mate, it was the first time I ever sold my art. I was like, oh, fuck, this is it's really cool. And uh, right. that, that was that. All right. So, and the next question is going to be a bit of a tough one, which is, right. I mean, you're already, I think you can already tell what it's going to be. No, don't worry. It's nothing personal. Um, <laughs> it's by right. the way, for anyone who's not listening, but watching the YouTube version of the full podcast, you might realize I, since minute mark 23, I'm, yeah, I'm just going to cut it short. I'm drunk right now, so sorry. If I hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My man. Yeah, yeah please. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a bit of a like you know. I get drunk. I thought, I, bit... thought, I thought I was sinking these beers too quick. You, you, you're half in the bag, guy. Eh? No, mate, you, yeah, you're doing very good. good. Yeah, you hold yourself very well. He's a professional, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. If you listen. <laughs> yeah, and the thing is, because I don't drink alcohol very much, so when I drink it, my body's always sensitive to it. Oh, you know, you That's didn't why. do it on my behalf, did you? Yeah, I mean, it was. I was like, it's gonna be fun. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a beer. Yeah, you know, first, mate, yeah. good man, bro. Nice. Yeah. Well, I, I, it even makes it more of an honor to be here. If only we could yeah, cheers thank in you person. So much. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Someday. Why not? All right. Yeah, mate. Mate, I'll, I'm sure I'll be back in Istanbul. If you come to London, awesome. it would be my pleasure. Come on I don't down. think I'll ever come to London anytime soon, but yeah. Oh, anytime right, you right. came to Istanbul, yeah. <laughs> Let's I will come to Istanbul, so I'll, yeah, awesome. we'll get a drink there. Yeah, definitely. And all right, the question is, who are your favorite artists and designers that have inspired you the most? That was a tough question. Ah, lovely question. I mean, I've, I've got a couple. So back to the basics, when I was young, it was Tintin and Asterix. So the Belgian comic artist Herge, who did Tintin, or Hergé, however they pronounce it, um, blew my mind as a kid, and that's what got me into drawing. And then there was Albert Uderzo, who did the Tintin, oh, sorry, the, the Asterix comic books. That's how I kind of taught myself to draw by reading those and copying them down. And then, I mean, these days there's a couple of like great artists of uh, Franklin Booth. Oh, sorry. I think if you, if you're familiar with my drawings, you'll definitely see this inspiration on me. Franklin Booth was an American illustrator from around the turn of the century, the 1800s to 1910s, 1920s. Uh, and he was a draftsman, so a lot of incredible black and whites. And that's kind of how I learned to draw clouds because the way he could draw these billowing shapes in the sky just with pen strokes, it's completely revolutionized my style of drawing because I've always had trouble drawing the natural architecture. It's very simple, straight lines, it's perspective. There's very easy rules to follow to make a good drawing, but drawing nature, clouds and wind and waves and, and the leaves of a tree, that can become quite complicated. And he mastered it. So, so Franklin Booth, um, J.C. Leyendecker, who was an old painter, again, same period, 1910s, 1920s in America, did a lot of like more like fashion. So he would do these beautiful paintings of men in arrow collar suits and women with a big poofy hats, soldiers going off to war, really of its time. I'm sure if you saw, you see, if, I can't even talk. If you see some of their artworks, you'd be like, oh yeah, that, that rings a bell. Um, and then there are some my, my peers on Instagram. There's a guy called Brian. He's a really fantastic artist. Um, there's a, a girl called Maya from Poland. If there's a way I could get their links, because I, I, I don't know how to pronounce their like Instagram handle it's names. Fine. If you so want, to, you can. Yeah, don't worry, it's fine. I can yeah. just send me the links later, and I'll definitely yeah. like you know add them in the captions or something. You know, mm. it's fine. Yeah. Or in this because it, it, it's my peers that inspire me the most, man. Like it's it's people around me, just same age as me, or, you know, older, younger, it doesn't matter. Post on Instagram kind of share tricks and trades and help each other out and i see something that you know other people do and i go like wow that's fucking awesome you're doing a great job you've inspired me to do a better job myself so yeah people like that if that answers the question yeah it does it definitely does and i mean here's the thing like you know i think even everyone most people that want to come on the or that come on the podcast 
and even you included, they all ask, do I need to prepare for anything? And I always say no. The reason is even for this question, you know, because if you prepare, like, you 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 kind of, like, you know, have a list of, like, detailed list of people you can say who inspired me. But if we yeah. don't prepare when I ask you this and I put you on the spot, the, the real answers actually come out because mm. your brain actually pops out some names. The first things that come to your mind, those are the correct answers in my opinion. That's it. You know? Yeah, mate, that's a really good point because you don't want me preparing something and being like, I want to be seen as this kind of artist and I want people to think this about me. But, uh, you know, you can just kind of ask me. I, it would have been, it would have helped if I, if I knew their actual Instagram handles. <laughs> Not much of a shout out. But, yeah, mate, it's, it's kind of good you didn't, you know, come with a set of prepared questions because it's more fun when it's just like a flying conversation. I think yeah, we talk definitely. more naturally. Like we had... To our, to our dear listeners, we had like a little five minute preamble before we hit record. It was nice, man. I got to talk to you. Can I meet you virtually? Yeah, man. It's, it's, it, you're doing a great job. You, you've got a nice little podcast here, mate. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate it. 10 out of 10. <laughs> awesome. And all right. So, what are you working on right now that you can tell us about? I mean, uh, what kind of project Ooh. is it? I mean, of course, if it's something that there's an NDA involved, we can skip right past this question, no problem. <laughs> but if that's not the case, what are you doing right now? I'm uh, I'm back in London, so I'm making prints. So I've got a print shop in London that do all my my lovely bespoke G clay uh, prints, which I can't do when I'm on the road. So I spend half my time traveling, backpacking, staying in Airbnbs in different cities. And when you're only spending like a week in one town at a time, you can't really make prints and send them off and pack them and ship them. So at the moment, I'm just focusing on on getting a whole bunch of prints made. Uh, before you were here, I don't know if you can see, but I've been sketching a little boat, a wobbler, a wobbler, just something that like I enjoy, just like little doodles like this. I'm going to do a series of pub drawings for a company in London. They're asking me to draw six fancy old Victorian pubs around town. So I'm going to do that. Yeah, mate, just, just, just work going through the commissions basically. So I just get bombarded and it's, it's amazing. I'm, I'm so grateful to anyone that's ever bought my art. They message me being like, ah, oh, can you draw Valencia or can you draw Singapore? So, you know, I've got a, I've got a backlog of those, which I just have to do. So, yeah, I'm just doing little jobs here and there, paying the bills somehow. And, 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 and being back in London, I haven't been here for like five months. So I'm catching up with little old friends. So I'm probably not drawing as much as I should be. You know, everyone's got their New Year's resolution, but it's been a pretty messy January here in London. I'm just kind of going out as much as I can and seeing as many people as I can while I'm here. Yeah, I'm kind of putting work off and I'm just trying to enjoy my life at the moment. Yeah, that's awesome. It's good to always like, you know, refreshen up and like, you know, recharge your mental yeah. health. It's always good. You're absolutely right. And what area beside the area you're working on right now would you be interested to would you be interested to explore and learn in the future? Like for example, let me rephrase the question this way. Um aside from art or anything art related that you of course obviously like and you do, mm. um what other activities you enjoy doing or you want to pursue in the future more? I, I really love – great question. Love it. Let's talk about stuff that isn't art. Yeah, no. I like – I love history. I'm, I'm fascinated by history. I spend all my days when I'm drawing just listening to history podcasts. So I like – I like to do like some history courses. Uh, but even more important, I like to learn more languages. So, you know, I, I, there was a while there in my life when I was, I was with a French girl for four years and I was spending a lot of time in France. And so I was doing French classes and trying to better myself there. Now I don't have much of an excuse to use it anymore. So it's kind of leaving me. But I've always wanted to learn Arabic. I think Arabic's really beautiful language. Um, and I really like, you know, I, I, I like being in that kind of world and, and and I'd, I'd like to do, yeah, Arabic classes. If, if I'm in London for like a, a while, I think I might go and fork out a bit of money and, and take some, some private lessons because I don't know anything about it, but I would like to. I mean, you're very well-spoken. You've clearly got perfect English. You can speak, what, far? Is it um, the Iranian? It's, uh, it's Farsi. Farsi, yeah, Farsi. Yes. Uh, and then can you, can, you can speak Turkish as well? Yes, yes. God, look at this guy. Uh, you probably got <laughs> something else up your sleeve. Can you speak any uh, French or Spanish? Or like? Actually, um, I used to study French for a while because I wanted to immigrate there at first. So I got to mm -hmm. level of A1, but then I dropped it. And it's kind of like, I just know je parlais 
I see. I don't. Even, I forgot everything, and I'm kind of drunk right I'll now. Put you so. on the spot, mate. That's yeah. okay. Bro. That's okay, mate. Your English is phenomenal. Thank you so like, much. I, Thank I, you so much. I, appreciate I can't it. speak. I mean, I, well, I, I was. I probably spent a month in Turkey. I can't remember any Turkish, which is so, which is so bad, right? Because it's. It's a cool language, man, and you know, Farsi is really cool. I, Arabic, I, I particularly kind of want to learn Arabic. I just, I just think there's something kind of beautiful about it. But um, no, yeah, I'm not going to do these things. But I would yeah. like to. That's what I want to learn languages. Yeah, yeah here's the thing. Um, I kind of we we both kind of share the same passion when it comes to language learning. But let me give you some tips. Turkish. Is the hardness of the Turkish is that it's a bit of an abstract language, and even the grammars, like it's yeah. some of the things are just really abstract, so you just have to memorize it. There's no way out of it. And but with, really, Ara- yeah. with Arabic, actually, it's uh, it's a, it's one of the richest languages in the whole world mm. right now. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And uh, like it's pretty hard to learn compared to English. Like English grammar in, compared to Arabic grammar is baby. Like I, like I don't know how to explain it. But I'm not <laughs> trying to listen. I'm not trying to discourage actually that's really yeah, good. Mate, mate, because... I, I know you're totally right. Everyone says Arabic is like one of the hardest languages to learn. So I'm like, why couldn't I just say Spanish? Because apparently from English to Spanish it's the easiest. But uh, Arabic just so different so kind of interesting and kind of it's beautiful it's beautiful yeah, actually fun fact i have and one of the next guests on the next weekend on the podcast is an arabic guest so Ooh. yeah we're not going to talk or speak arabic but i mean and i was i thought it would be interesting to mention. You, you you do you do you oh well, i can't talk. you do these in english right you know, I've, I've listened to them. I can't, yeah. have you have you done any in farsi or in, in yes, Turkish? Yes. Or? Oh, a lot right. in farsi yeah, I have a oh, lot of man, I've got to go back and go through the go through the archives. I, <laughs> I mean, I, I won't know what to. I won't know what I'm hearing, but I'll enjoy it. Sounds pretty cool. Yeah, thanks so much. <laughs> and um, all right, so if we reach the final question of the podcast and final section of the podcast, which is called final words. All right, let me explain. Imagine Ooh, you had a limited amount of time, and in that limited amount of time, you could say a message or messages to anyone who's listening to this podcast in the f- any point any point of time oh, in the wow. future they've been listening for 47 minutes to, to both of us that is speaking and now they're here in that window of time what would you say like as a human to another human being what, what would i what would i say to them in in this window of time yes wow uh i mean that's a pretty that's a pretty big question I'd say, I mean, d- depending on the age group, right? Like, whenever I get, you know, depressed or full of terrible, crippling self-doubt, you know, wondering, oh, I should have done something else in life. I got regrets and all that sort of stuff. I just always like to remind myself, hey, look, we're all going to die. Uh, and ultimately, no one's going to remember you a couple of generations down the line. So just try and just be as happy as you can do as much as you know, the stuff that you love uh, and be around the people that you love. So long as you don't, you know, hurt others, but yeah, make I mean, that's my biggest like solace for me when I'm drawing and I'm worried about drawing. I'm, I got friends who they're lawyers, they're working in insurance and they're doing so well and they're going to buy a house and they're going to have a baby. And I'm thinking like, fuck, I'm almost 30 years old and I kind of, I'm nowhere near any of those things. But the great solace is nothing really matters. Uh, I'm not a religious man. Obviously, it changes if you're, you've got religious convictions. But yeah, I just think, you know, just try and enjoy life as much as you can because because at the end of the day, we're all going to end up in the same place. So be kind to the people around you and try and, and explore this world, right? Like I think, oh, I would love to go back to the 1920s or, you know, I wonder what Istanbul was like in the 1600s. You know, Sinan's Istanbul, oh, just see some crazy cool stuff. And people in 500 years' time will be like, what the hell would it have been like to be in London or in, in you know, Berlin in 2022? Wouldn't that be cool? So I think, right, put myself in their shoes and just be blown away by the beauty and the wonder of everything around us. Yeah, awesome. And all right. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> yeah. <man>. And, yeah. <laughs> 
And thank you to Unimon to tune in lesson. But before we close off this episode, I need to mention some important stuff. First of all, our today's oh, yeah. guest, Mr. Ma- Mr. Maxwell Tills, has all- has also a Patreon. So if you're interested, there's oh. two there's two tiers called the official Patreon, which is like two euros, two pounds. I think that's a symbol of English pounds, right? Yeah. Two pounds per month plus VAT, of course. And also there's an all access Patreon tier, which is eight eight uh, pounds per you know month, of course. And you can mm. get, you know, work in progress behind the scenes videos, video tutorials, um, early access You've to your illustrations. Oh, yes, it. of course. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> and so, yeah, I mean, like I understand, but I think definitely if you're interested in this style of work and you're an artist, you want to get inspired or you're someone who just enjoys the art that you're seeing on this page, I think I definitely recommend everyone to go for the two pounds. You know, I think that's the most yeah. easiest thing everyone can go for. Yeah. And so I definitely recommend that. And also there's a Etsy shop as well with illustrations. There's oh. currently, I'm seeing a Lisbon print Early and a Stumble two. Circular print. Yeah. Which eight people have put the Lisbon print in their basket and 15 people <laughs> have put this Stumble print in their basket. So it means they're really good... Stuff, the, these you know? they assemble ones that go they they go quick and then I get requests for months and months on end being like yeah. oh, when are you going to get new prints in I'm like oh, but uh, soon and so yeah. they're there now so <laughs> get them while they're fresh kids yeah exactly and also there's a TikTok I I put that all the three stuff that I talked about I put all the links in the caption as well so you can all access them pretty easily my friend, you're very kind and yeah my pleasure and also thank you for one putting last... up with my, my rambles no 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 it's fine thank you for putting up with my like you know this right now I'm drawing so I'm sorry hey you're you're, you're crystal clear mate you're you're you're, 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 you're fine yeah you're you doing know, a very you... good job you're a professional you. have you watched the cartoon ratatouille there's a rat in the hat of the guy who watched that yeah yeah remy remy the rat yeah. yes so there's this rat in some membrane so it's basically that's the thing that's pulling <laughs> and talking i'm actually i just just fall down like this right <laughs> yes yeah, so i'm sorry well, mate, you've, you've got we're on the home stretch now you can hit stop and no take no, no, a break. no 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 it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> you're done good mate you're done good all right so the last thing i actually want to ask you is there's mm. also an underlink in your link tree, which was like I draw water bottle and this illustration for. Could you oh yeah, talk a bit that about was that? cool, man. Mate, that's a cool project. So that was that's a, a, a they're based in Milan. No, they're based in Turin in Italy. Guys, if you love the environment, <laughs> they're this entirely eco-friendly water bottle, and a lot of the proceeds, I think, fifty percent of the proceeds go to um, this charity that helps clean up the Mediterranean. It's like a reusable beautiful plastic water bottle like like you know it's, it's not plastic it's made out of like a fiberglass um and they're a startup they're a young couple but they've uh, made this incredible product and they've very nicely brought me on to design a, a, an illustration for the side of the bottle and uh, yeah basically uh, half the proceeds go to this this charity that that helps clear up the waters particularly uh, in in the med um, but hopefully all over the world uh, and it's just this really great sustainable eco-friendly water bottle that also filters out dirty water so so yeah it, it, you, can, you can check the link and you know go online if you have fancy something like that um, but yeah it's, it's it's a really cool project that I'm, I'm quite proud to have been a part of hey you've, you've really done your research man I'm flattered you kind of you, you kind of know all my stuff it's a nice nice work man yeah I mean I always have to do research this stuff pro. when I have a guest you're a pro Very cool. thanks so much and so, you know, as he, as Mr. Till said, if you like the environment, go check out the Hydro Water Bottle. And you hate the environment, go support one of those board Ape NFTs. So, you know, your choice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, all right. So, again, thank you so much for coming by. And thank you to anyone who tuned in and listened to this episode. If you have any comments or suggestions or, you know, basically anything, leave them down in the comment section. We're yeah. on YouTube, CastBox, Instagram, or even can DM it. Hit me up in the DMs on the Korea Podcast page. I'll always check them all out, every single one of them. And that's about it. Take care, everyone, and have a nice day. Bye, everyone.